not everybody knows it, but 4% of the population has a brain area responsible for telekinesis. Right now, you might be thinking, am I part of this 4%? Or what the hell is telekinesis? But I'm sure that only some of you realized it was a fake info. <laughs> Let me reveal an inconvenient truth. Your brain is constantly playing tricks on you. Just a minute ago, you fell victim of framing bias. Look at this. Lab card. Glasses. Cache information and statistics. All these elements inspire trust. So your brain took the option to believe me, which is in fact the quickest option. And this is actually one of the evolutionary reasons for irrational judgments known as biases. Imagine a caveman face to face with a wild boar. If he reacts fast, he will have a nice dinner, yeah? However, if he spends time analyzing the situation, the dinner will be for the wild boar. So, our brain has evolved to make quick decisions and began using shortcuts, like, for example, delivering someone wearing a lap card. Another reason is our desire to be better than others. Picture yourself a cock. Of course, a girl. He's in the middle of his courtship period, and he wants to pick up chicks. So... She finds one special song for it, something fiery like Despacito, and the chicks fall for it. So the bird makes an association. Song equals success. He uses it for other mating partners, and now he is the coolest guy in town. We humans are also prone to associations, but our environment is complex and contains many, many random events which we can relate, even if there is no connection between them. And this is known as association bias. Simple example. When I was competing at the same final in Lausanne, I was wearing a watch. The result, I'm here tonight. <laughs> you will agree, there is no connection between a watch and my qualification. However, if I had this association bias, I would be wearing this watch right now, hoping to be qualified for the international finals. But being aware of such a bias, I definitely made it sure I didn't put my watch on. Look! Well, <laughs> uh, we can help our brain become bias-free. It's very, very simple. Every time you receive a new information, just analyze it using this list of 200 biases. <laughs> Give your brain a chance to become that, what it stands for. Be rational and ignore nonsense. Thank you. <laughs> Nikita, over here. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, could you tell us if uh, this association bias yeah. in, in, in literature or something, there is a um, kind of association bias that was harmful, or for example, people went to prison because of it? Uh, I don't think that it's harmful, but yes, it's uh, something that uh, causes some um, not very agreeable events in our life, yeah. What do you find fascinating about biases? Is, uh, it is the fact that we all are biased. Yeah, all the people in this room, me personally, I'm biased, you are biased too, and it's a fascinating the fascinating thing, and another thing is that our brain is a very piece of work, uh, piece of art, but at the same time, it evolves much slower than our environment. That's why we have these biases, and this is fascinating. So, what do you think about an ideal world with no biases and which is completely rational? Would that be your idea? Uh, well. Personally, I don't think that we could, we could live in this ideal world because we need some emotional decisions, of course. But it would be very great if we had those more rational decisions, of course. So everyone just uh, has to be biased and everything is okay? Uh, the problem is that we don't know whether we are biased. So we think that it's okay, but in reality, it's not so okay.
Do you know which part of the brain actually that uh, controls or governs this uh, association bias? The association bias, I think uh, a lot of parts, for example, the auditive cortex and the visual cortex, because we can be biased by visual information or by sound.